Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the 2005 supernatural thriller Constantine, which was directed by Francis Lawrence, starring Keanu Reeves, Rachel Weisz, Tilda Swinton, Peter Stormare, and Jimon Honsu. The titular Constantine is based on the character of the same name, created by Alan Moore in 1985. Making his debut appearance on the writer's run of Swamp Thing, before getting his own comic book title in the form of Hellblazer, John Constantine was a chain-smoking, cynical occult detective from Liverpool, England that was a perfect example of a classic anti-hero, regularly performing deeds that were morally right, but rarely for altruistic reasons, with the detective often acting primarily out of self-interest, and in ways that defined conventional, ethical and moral codes that defined traditional, heroic archetypes. The noir-inspired supernatural thriller revolves around John Constantine, an LA occult detective who had taken his own life at the age of 15, unable to cope with visions of demons, angels, and half-breeds that plagued him. After spending a few minutes in hell before being revived by paramedics, John became destined to enter the gates of hell upon his death. Constantine then spends the entirety of his existence saving other souls in the hope that he could be forgiven by God and welcomed into heaven. We're gonna follow you up, we're gonna run through the whole action. I will smite thee in his honor. <laughs> Pre production for the film began in the late months of 1997 with the hiring of Kevin Broadbent to write the screenplay, and by 1999, Paul Hunter was attached to direct the film. Hunter was then replaced by Tarsim Singh, but the director chose to abandon the project in favour of working on the mind-bending cell, in part due to creative differences that arose with the adaptation. Nicolas Cage was also pushed as a frontrunner for the role of Constantine, before Keanu Reeves was finally cast in 2002, followed by the confirmation that Francis Lawrence would be directing in what would be his feature-length directorial debut. With the success of Constantine, Lawrence would of course go on to work on I Am Legend starring Will Smith and the three latter Hunger Games films Catching Fire and Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2. The delightfully talented Rachel Weisz, who had the difficult task of playing Angela Dodson, her twin sister Isabel, and Mammon, the son of Lucifer, was also cast a few months later, followed by Shia LaBeouf as Chaz Kramer, Jumon Honsu as Papa Midnight, Tilda Swinton as the Archangel Gabriel, and Peter Stormare as Lucifer, in what has to be one of my favourite portrayals of the devil on screen. In the comics, we would see Constantine use his magical lineage, cunning, intelligence, as well as his violent and antisocial behaviour to establish himself as one of the most notorious warlocks on Earth. The film takes some of these facets, like his chain-smoking, cynical outlook on life, devil-may-care persona, and his job as an occult detective, but it changes his demeanour, appearance, and his origins by explaining that he was born and raised in LA. And while we do see him use his cunning intelligence and his magical abilities in the film, it's unclear whether this was due to his family's magical genealogy or simply something he developed on his own. Dedicating his life to mastering demonology, routinely carrying out exorcisms and hunting down supernatural entities, the cursed anti-hero has lived one of the most depressing lives, losing much of his family and most of those that were close to him in the process of carrying out his work. The subject matter of the Hellblazer comics is so bleak that DC published Constantine's line of stories through Vertigo, an imprint of DC created in 1993 that enabled them to publish stories with more graphic and adult content that didn't fit within the restrictions of the Comics Code Authority, thus giving them more creative freedom without affecting the image of their leading publication. Unlike other wizards found in popular culture, Constantine would scarcely use magical spells, preferring instead to rely on his cunning, his vast knowledge of the occult, his skillful manipulation of enemies, and even friends towards the attainment of his goals. The film uses some of the same characters, features a similar tone, and borrows a few plot elements from their dangerous habits and original sin story arcs. However, it also takes many liberties by reinventing the character and the world around him, ultimately changing who he was at his core by its conclusion, which is one of the main reasons it's disliked by those that love the comic book character. I mean, the Constantine in the comics was inspired by Sting. He lived and mainly operated in London, wore a brown overcoat, and he was even in a punk rock band called Mucus Membrane. While the Constantine Keanu Reeves portrays goes in a very different direction, with his visual style taking a more gothic route. And although he's still cynical and manipulative, the character doesn't seem to have the same energy and humor as his comic book counterpart. Now, the film sees Constantine uncover the plans of Mammon, the first son of Satan, who is planning on taking over the Earth, with the hope of eventually overpowering both his father in Hell and God in Heaven to become the sole ruler of all existence. 
In order to achieve his rebirth onto the Earth, we're told that he needed the help of a powerful psychic and the help of God. To this end, Mammon possessed a woman called Isabel, who, much like Constantine's friend Father Hennessy, had recurring visions of the paranormal, fulfilling the role of the psychic he needed. And when a scavenger uncovers the Spear of Destiny in an abandoned church in Mexico, which was the lad that supposedly pierced the side of Christ as he hung from the cross, he too is also possessed and begins to make his way to the US under the control of Mammon, giving him the assistance of God he required. While half-breeds of angels and demons were allowed to live amongst us and influence people in a wager both God and the devil had since the creation of humanity, the laws that stopped fully-fledged demons and angels from walking the earth were broken by Mammon as his sinister machinations kicked into gear. Constantine is first alerted to this after he'd successfully exorcised a soldier demon from a child in the film's opening, a type of demonic hellion that should not have been able to enter our plane. This is succeeded by an attack from another demon, causing a bewildered Constantine to seek the help of Papa Midnight, an old friend and witch doctor who ran a club that served this neutral ground for half-breeds. Midnight initially dismisses his claims, asserting that the balance between heaven and hell had and always would be respected by both sides, but later aids Constantine in his conflict with Memon. The apathetic John also begins to change as a character once he's informed that he is doomed to spend eternity in hell after his death by Gabriel, in yet another magnetic performance by Tilda Swinton. And you're going to go to hell because of the life you took. You're fucked. Once he accepts this, his transformation starts to take shape from an anti-hero to a classic hero archetype that begins putting the needs of others before his own. With the death of Isabel, who had seemingly taken her own life, John is contacted by Isabel's twin sister and LA detective Angela Dodson, who asks for his help in discerning the truth after discovering security footage of Isabel saying Constantine's name moments before jumping from the roof of a psychiatric hospital. Insisting that her sister was a devout Catholic that would not have possibly committed such a sin, Angela persuades Constantine to momentarily transport himself back to hell with the assistance of a familiar, where he confirms that Isabel was indeed damned to eternally relive her demise. When they visit Isabel's room in the hospital, the two discover a clue directing them to a prophecy in the Satanic Bible that stated Mammon would at some stage attempt to claim Earth as his own. This was the very reason that Isabel had jumped from the roof, defiantly resisting Mammon by denying him the ability to use her as a vessel for his rebirth. With Isabel now in hell, Mammon abducts her twin Angela, who admitted that she used to have the same visions as her sister, sending Constantine in a race against time to save Angela and prevent Mammon from taking over. After fighting through a horde of half-demons, both John and Chaz find Angela. An invisible entity revealed to be Gabriel then kills Kramer, who had previously expressed her resentment of God's favoritism towards humans. Her plan was, in essence, to unleash hell on Earth to weed out the majority of humanity, which she believed were unworthy of God's love. Gabriel then casts Constantine out of the room using her powers and begins driving the Spear of Destiny into Angela to free Mammon. Left without any other options, a hopeless John cuts his own wrists, knowing that his soul was the only one Lucifer would come up to personally collect. When he arrives, John informs the devil that his son was planning on usurping him, leading to Satan stopping the ritual in the nick of time and him sending Mammon back to hell. When granted a single wish by Lucifer out of gratitude, Constantine selflessly requests that Isabel be sent up to heaven from hell in exchange for him. But when the devil attempts to transport John to hell, he's stopped by God who begins carrying Constantine into heaven for his sacrifice. Furious that his most sought after soul would now be forever out of his reach, Lucifer healed John of his injuries and cured him of his lung cancer with the hopes that he would once again damn himself to hell. With a new lease on life, John stops smoking along with his other dangerous habits and he becomes a selfless hero that was no longer flawed. And therein lies the only problem I have with this adaptation. Constantine, much like Captain America, is a unique character in that they are both not supposed to change over time while the rest of the world changes around them. The Cap does not change in the comics, beginning and continuing his arc as a noble, caring and defiant protector of truth, justice and the innocent. And in the films, he ends in the same way that he began, never wavering in his ideologies or morals throughout his seven appearances in the MCU. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. No, you don't. No, I don't. John Constantine also does not grow or change who he is throughout his publication history. He is and always will be a selfish, manipulative and broken, chain-smoking warlock that only chooses to help others when it best served his interests. I really need to speak with him, it's very important. First come, first served. Oh, so you're rude no matter where you are. 
By curing John of his cancer, removing his doomed fate to enter hell, and transforming him into a traditional hero archetype, the movie fundamentally changes who Constantine is. Having said that, I really liked the film and thought it was an ambitious attempt at delving into the dark subject matter of Vertigo comics, with Constantine being portrayed as the Dirty Harry of the occult, and I highly recommend it to lovers of the supernatural genre. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who requested we explore Constantine. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film and Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Holy water.